Hi Myers friends and family. Today we're going to go through the Venture operational video. By the way, first off, congratulations on this machine. It's an incredible machine. I love this machine. Ten different threads can be loaded on it at once. Makes embroidering so much easier. This also has a lot of the newer features that most of the flatbed machines have as well along with the capabilities of really easily embroidering on a cap. So I'll be able to show you the cap frame, we'll show you some of the features with IQ Designer, and we'll get to it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to thread the machine. I will show you completely from scratch because occasionally your knot won't be tied properly or you'll run out of thread and you'll have to uh, thread it from all the way from scratch. And then I'll show you a way that's much, much, much faster. So first things first at the top, we need to make sure we open up the little gate here so that we can see through. And whenever we're cutting thread or anything, we want to make sure we cut it back here and pull it through at the front. So I just like to pinch around the needle and pull the thread out. You definitely always want the thread to travel the way it's designed to go through the machine. We're going to go that way. You never want to pull it backwards through anything. All right, so we're going to take our spool, hook it up here. I prefer to use the tweezers, but sometimes you can kind of spin this just right, fold it over and get it to work that way. I just feel like tweezers get into areas a lot better than my fingers do. Uh, so if you look, we're on spool number one. And if you look at every one of these little holes, it's marked with a one, so you know exactly where to go. So I'm gonna go through the first hole and the second one. What you'll notice that this back row has two holes to go through and the front row only has one. So that makes it a little bit nicer. So there's the hole at the top here. We have that here. Sneak around the front. So there's a little channel in here. Again, it's marked with a one. Super easy. There's a hole in the back here. Okay. And you can see here there's a little metal plate. We want to make sure it goes underneath. And you want it to be the left of each of those little teeth there. So it stays in that little groove. Up here around, if you look, there's a little arrow that indicates how you want to go around this. You're going to go one full rotation around it. You're going to go to the right of the first pin, the left of the second pin. And then we have another little metal plate that we need to make sure it goes under on the left side of the teeth. We're going to go down the right channel. And we're going to go up and we're going to go through the take-up lever. And we're going to go back down. There's one more hole back here in the back. So make sure you don't forget that one. and come down here. There's also another little handy tool that comes with the machine. It's kind of got like a fork on it that helps you kind of get the thread in a groove and you can push it back over this little lever right above the needle. Okay, once we get to there, we want to make sure. So right now the active needle is two. You can actually, oh, it doesn't do about that. But here you can see that it's highlighted with two. So that's what needle we're on. But we want to make sure we're on one because that's one we're threading. We're gonna hit the needle thread button. It's gonna activate the needle threader. So we're gonna go under actually all three of these little metal pieces. And we're gonna go up and around. It's gonna cut off the thread. We're gonna hit the button one more time. Voila, let's thread it. All right, so I'm gonna re-thread number two, but I'm gonna do it a little bit different way. So we're gonna go back here. I'm gonna cut the string a little bit longer. Drop my thread. I'm going to put the new spool on here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take both threads, try to get kind of a decent long tail here. And I'm going to tie an overhand knot on it. And then we're going to pull it through the front. So again, I'm going to pinch on the needle. I'm going to pull all the way through. Everything except for we don't want to pull it through the eye of the needle. So we're going to go back to the number two position. We're going to put our needle threader down. We're going to run this over up and around and thread the needle. Now that we're done threading the top, we would make sure we close this little gate up here so it can keep the thread from going crazy. Then I want to show you how to load your bobbin. So you just open up the door down here and I want you to make sure just to be very careful with this little picker arm. You definitely don't want to bend it. There's a little tab here on the bobbin case. You're going to pull on that and grab it. You can kind of angle this out. 
to where it's just fine like that. Uh, about every other time you change your bobbin, I want to make sure you oil it. And so on your screen, if you hit the little oil button, it'll automatically rotate it so where it's at the maximum spot to oil it. There's a little hole on the side. You can take your precision oiler and drop an oil, a drop of oil in there. And then just hit OK and it'll rotate it back. So I'll pop this out here. So I'm using pre-wound bobbins right now. You can see that they have just a little cardboard disc on it. So when it's empty, it pretty much flattens into nothing, zero waste. I recommend you get them in a case because you will go through a ton of bobbins on this machine. Um, so you can get them with the cardboard edges or you can also get the, I think they're called magnet glide or something like that, where it has a little magnet in it. So it, it sticks inside of the bobbin case real nicely. But either one works. Or you can even pre-wound, uh, you can wind your own if you have a bobbin winder. So what I want you to do is take a look at the bobbin, make sure that the thread is coming off on the right hand side and in your bobbin case, you will load it in that way. And you'll see there's a little channel here that you're gonna guide it through the channel and then along this ridge here. And you wanna make sure you hear it pop in there. So it should be up here. You just wanna make sure when you kind of pull on it, it has some, has some tension in it. Um, you're not really supposed to hold this when you put it in, but otherwise I don't, I can't really get a good grip on it. But I'm gonna hold on it, get it in there and just kind of set it in there nicely. And we're gonna wait for it to click. Once it's in there, that's all you need to do. You can close everything up and stitch along. So one of the first things you can consider when you're working on an embroidery project is what kind of stabilizer you're using. So the stabilizer is there to provide extra support to the fabric or whatever it is you're stitching on to support all those extra stitches that's, that's there. And it also keeps everything still while you're stitching on it. So there's three main kinds of stabilizer. You have cutaway, tearaway, and washaway. So typically, cutaway is probably the most common that I'll see. And what happens is when you're done stitching, you have to cut away any excess. So your project will always have the stabilizer behind it. So that's one option. The other option you have is a tearaway. And you can see as it tears here, um, when you're done with the project, you'll just tear it away. Now it'll still leave some stabilizer behind the stitches for some strength there, but for the most part, it's all the way gone. The third kind is called wash away, and you guessed it, it washes away. So on a project like this, when you're doing freestanding lace, I always have a problem with this button. I'll do this one. So the stabilizer's in the hoop when you're stitching everything out, but when you're done, all that's left is the thread. So it can be some really cool projects. If you're embroidering on towels, typically wash away is a common one to be able to be used just because it's not there left over when you're done. So I want to show you how to properly hoop stabilizer and fabric into a frame. This happens to be the five by seven frame on the machine. Um, the one thing I want you to notice is that it's the same connector on both sides. So you can actually load this into the machine either way, which is really, really handy. Um, but there's still ways that you can load this incorrectly. So I just want to make sure. So the metal part's gonna be on the top of this. So you definitely don't wanna hoop this upside down. You can see that just kinda looks like the bottom. So we wanna make sure it's loaded like this. This little ring is gonna be the bottom portion of it. So we're gonna put that down first. And you're gonna put your stabilizer, whatever one you decide to use. And then you're gonna hoop your fabric or whatever project you have. You'll typically wanna loosen this enough to where you can get this through, but you can adjust that as you go. You're gonna center this in here. You need to adjust it, you can. Um, one thing to note is see there's little marks on the center point, so if you needed to center your, your fabric, you can. And I'm just gonna hand tighten this. But there is a little notch here, you can use a screwdriver if you don't have the grip strength. And I just check to make sure this is flush around here, you don't have it falling out. Um, you want to have some confidence that when you tap on this like a drum that it's not falling apart. You don't want to over tighten it because um, you can definitely stretch your fabric out or cause issues with it. Oops, clearly it's a tearaway stabilizer. Um, so that's how you hoop it. Um, I do have the table installed. Um, this is an optional accessory. If you're sewing something really large and heavy like a sweatshirt, this is really handy because it holds the weight of it and keeps it off the arm of your machine. Um, but once you load that, you can just, well, I don't have it adjusted for this, but this is how you hoop and get it in. And we'll show you how to adjust the frames next. 
Okay, so I want to show you some, thing, th some things about the frames. There's actually two frames that come with your machine. There's frame A, which I have loaded on here. This is frame B. Uh, frame B is for any optional frames that you'd like to purchase. Everything that comes with the machine will load onto frame A. Um, but I want you to keep track of which these are. If you have multiple of these machines, you need to keep these assigned to the specific machine. They look like they can be interchangeable, but they are calibrated to the machine. So make sure you keep track of what they are. Okay, having said that, I wanna show you how to do it. So obviously on here, I have a five by seven frame, it's not gonna load, or a five by seven hoop, it's not gonna load onto this frame. So right now this frame is set up to be on the larger, the largest setting. So this would be your eight by 14 hoop. In order to adjust that, you have two screws back here. You have a large screw and a small screw. So when you loosen those, this left arm adjusts. Okay, so you're gonna adjust it down until you can feel the stop for the size you want it to be at. So right here I can feel there's a little stop, that'd be the right size. Um, but what I make sure you do is you definitely need to tighten these screws back here. If you look to the screen, there's a sensor in the back that detects what size frame it is. So right now it thinks it's the teeny tiny frame. And if I just move this a little bit, see how it thinks it's different size frames? We definitely wanna make sure it's properly reading the right size frame. So make sure you tighten this down nice and good so that it's showing you that it's the five by seven frame. And then once you have that properly locked down, then you can go ahead and put your hoop on and it just slides right in. And the really nice thing is there's these little guide pins here that keep it exactly in place, just like that. And when you're ready to take the hoop off, there's tabs on the side that you can just kind of push and lift this right off. So it's super easy to, to load the hoops onto the machine. So now I'm just going to do a test stitch out. If you just threaded this for the first time, I prefer you do this little test stitch out just to make sure everything's threaded properly. So in this medallion screen, there's one with 10 bars on it. We're going to select that one. And so what that's going to do is it's going to do each one of the needle stops and stitch out a little bar. So I'm not going to show you any of the editing features right now. We're just going to click through, edit in. We're going to go to embroidery. It's going to tell us it wants to line up the colors, but realistically, we don't care what color is stitching out right now. So we're just going to close this screen. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then when we're ready to stitch out, we're just going to hit lock. And it says it's ready to stitch out. We're going to hit start. finished stitching. One of the reasons I love this test stitch out is because there's a lot of things that it'll show you. Um, first things off I want to show you if you look the fabric's puckering a little bit so that could be in my case I was a little stingy with the fabric it could be it wasn't hooped as well as it should have been. Um, the other thing that could be causing that is the stabilizer. Sometimes you need a thicker stabilizer if you've got more dense stitches but over here it looks fine so I don't think it's a stabilizer I think it's more how I'm hooping it. Um, I also want you to notice something here. The yellow one didn't stitch out all the way. You started seeing the bobbin thread coming up. So more than likely something was probably caught on this yellow thread at the beginning and it corrected itself. So if it didn't finish through with that, you'd either need to check to make sure that that particular thread stop was threaded properly. Um, but right now it looks like it kind of corrected itself. So keep an eye out for stuff like that. The other thing to watch is in the back you should see the mostly the the top thread you should see generally speaking you should see a third of the bobbin thread um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of bobbin thread so I might want to tension uh, you always want to start with the tension in the bobbin first um, so this one it's possible we have a little too loose of or too tight of tension in the bobbin um, if you've adjusted the bobbin thread first and maybe there's certain let's say it's only one thread stop that's having a problem you can adjust the tension on the top thread uh, but always stitch this out first adjust the bobbin tension first and then you can go to the top thread um, but that just shows you how fun it is I mean how easy is that I mean on a flat bed you'd have to stop and change it the colors nine different times so now that we've done stitched out that I just want to show you some more features with the screen itself um, so the particular design we picked up at the top it's showing you the frames that are available so it's the teeny tiny frame that's that this will not stitch out on but you can see we could have stitched this design all the way down in a four by four four by four frame all the way up to our largest eight by 14 frame. Also on here, it's actually telling you the size of the design. It's about 1.2 inches by 3.8. 
Um, this tells us any kind of vertical and horizontal offset if we would have done that, any rotation. It's also telling, it, telling us it's using 10 different thread colors. Um, so I'm going to go back. Whenever you're done with something, it's easiest just to go back to the home screen and cancel what we're working on. There are tons of pre-built designs into this machine. The majority of them are under the baby lock designs. And there's lots of, lots of designs out there. You also have multiple ways to see the little thumbnail images. So you can see they're pretty small when I have the little nine squares selected. If I want to see them a little bit bigger, I can click on the four squares. And if I want to see them even bigger, I can click on the one with two squares. And then you can either click and slide or you can use the scroll bars on the side to pick them. And you can see there's lots of different options that are out there. All right, so we'll go all the way back. And here at this little medallion, there's some other specialty stitches that are out there. Lots of different options. These are some really cute quilting designs. Um, go back. So we have some shapes that we can select. I can pick a heart, for example. You can see it up there at the top. Let me go back to add again. We have some decorative stitches. You can select anything from there. We also have some built-in monogramming. We have all kinds of fonts. And don't forget this exclusive script is a font in itself. So if you were to go to put in a font, well, I'll just go here. So I'm gonna select one. You can see up across the top, you can pick whether you want uppercase letters or lowercase letters. I'm just gonna kind of type some here. And you can just see it displays on there. Um, you have different options in here. Um, you can choose to put it, to treat this as an array and you can curve. You can curve them if you want. Um, you can go in, you can space the letters out a little bit if you'd like. There's lots of things you can play with, so just have fun with it. Go in here. Uh, if you don't really quite like that font, you can always change to a different one. Oh, this changes on the individual one. Um, later on, you can change it as a whole. But, but you can go between them with these arrows and you can see what's selected by what has the, the red border around the outside of it. I'm just going to set that for now. Go back to the add screen. We also have some large font sizes that are out there that are really neat. Some of these look really pretty stitched out on a towel. So lots of things to play around with with that. Um, let me go back here. I'm going to return. So here I've got two designs on here. Uh, you can drag and drop however you want to do it. Um, if you do notice that the frame is shown for the uh, the hoop I have installed right now. Um, if you take that out, you can also set set the size for what you want. So you want to definitely make sure you keep it within that rectangle. If you scroll outside of it, you'll see that it's no longer supported for that hoop. So you make sure you stay in here. You could move it real quickly with just touching and dragging on the screen, or if you want some more granular movements, you can use the, the arrows here. Um, if you've accidentally moved it off to the center and you want to go back to the center, you can hit the dot in the middle and it puts it right back in the center. Um, like you saw, I added multiple elements by hitting the add, but if we don't like something, you can just hit the delete and it'll delete that element. So we have that. You've got lots of editing features that are on here. Um, we talked about some of that. So size, you can make it larger or smaller. You can see there's multiple different ways to just squish it on the X and Y axis, or you can resize it on both axes. So we have that. If you want to zoom in, we've got some zooming capabilities, so you can zoom in to see see things for proper lineup with it. You can rotate, so you can either rotate by grabbing the handles on the side and rotate it, or you can use the buttons to rotate. If you want to go back to the original version, you can just hit reset. Hit OK there. You have the ability to change the density on stitches. My recommendation to you is always just stitch it out the first time with regular 100% density. If you're seeing where there's too much thread in a certain area or not enough, then you can mess with the density, but I wouldn't play with it without first stitching it. In here, you can choose what color you want it to do with it, just to show the, the color chip on the design. Um, it really doesn't matter what's shown on here. What matters is what you have loaded when you actually stitch it out. Uh, but sometimes it's neat to kind of, to gauge what's on there. Um, here you have the ability to tile it. I'm going to size this down a little bit here. So if we hit this, you can do it where you can duplicate rows and columns, which is kind of nice. Oops. 
move all these down. So if you want to stitch out multiple things, especially when you go into the larger hoop, it's really nice to be able to duplicate designs. And this lines them up perfectly. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. We have multi-select turned on. We can rotate them as a whole. We also have undo and redo buttons. So I'm going to go back to where I just have a single heart. We have a duplicate feature. So you can duplicate it on your own if you don't necessarily want them lined up. Like maybe you want to take one and rotate it differently. You can do that. Lots of different options you have here. Um, so we'll go on that. You have some options to do stippling on the outside of an object. Um, you can play with, with that. Um, there's also the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did it where I filled in the whole area and it's larger than the frame. So we're just going to undo and go back out of there. Um, there's some options to play with. Um, this here is the stamp feature for using an IQ designer. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but I just wanted to show you the basic positioning that we have here. Um, I do want to go back. I want to show you the, the color visualizer is actually a pretty cool tool. Let's see here. I'm going to choose a letter here. We're going to go into here. So there's a color visualizer tool. So right now this recommends that you use, well, it just it's just started with. So it has kind of this gold color. It's got pinks and grays and greens. But let's say you want to change it to something different, but you just want some ideas. So if we do soft, it'll give us some options on what soft colors there are. If I don't like those and I want it to generate some more, I'll hit refresh and it gives me another set. Every time it refreshes, it saves what's in there. So you can page back to the previous one. If you want to take a look at that. We go back, we can choose vivid colors. Again, we can refresh. And this isn't necessarily picking what we have loaded in the machine, it's just random colors that are out there. If any of these you like, you can click on the little, oops. You can click on the little heart and look at it. Um, like we saw here, you can click on it to have a, a larger zoomed in view. I'm gonna go back here. We're gonna try random colors. Um, the random, you can have it kinda Auto pick the colors you can manually say well I kind of want to have some pinks in here and have it kind of generate from there so you can see that the three colors I picked are either in the background or in the foreground and then of the favorites that you go through you can go back and select the favorites from there and review them kind of compare them which is really a neat feature that they have here um, you can also well I was gonna say there's only four colors in this design but if you had a design that had maybe ten colors you can choose how many of those colors you want in there. Um, so I guess if you only wanted two, I'll pick one here. So there's only doing combinations of two color. So there's lots of different variations that you have for the color visualizer. I'd like to show you the camera positioning next, but in order to do that, I want to do, I want to pick a design that's actually going to work better with what I already have in the hoop. So I'm going to go back home and I'm just going to select a shape. Let's just do a basic rectangle, nothing too crazy here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, okay, and then I basically want to stitch around that design that I had there, but it's kind of hard to line it up. So what I'm going to do is the camera, it says the frame's going to move, to scan it. Okay, and you can see on the screen it's actually showing us real time, not real time, but it took a picture of what's on there. So you can see this is actually going to overlap. So I actually want to size this up a little bit larger and you can adjust it exactly where I want it so that rectangle will be framed around this. So it's a really neat feature when you're trying to exactly make sure it stitches exactly where you want it to be. If you haven't hooped anything straight, it's really nice just to have that, have that there. The other thing you can do cancel out of here. The other thing you can do is use the snowman positioning stickers in order to line it up properly here. So at that point you would go, we're out of the embroidery edit screen and you can click the snowman sticker. So it's asking me what the original position ang angle. Um, it has it where you can determine where you want the, the snowman sticker to position, whether you want it to be on the left, right, top, bottom, or the center. So just a real quick explanation, this is what we call the snowman sticker because it looks like a little head and little body for the snowman. And what this does is it tells the machine how you want it oriented. So if you hooped 
your design perfectly and you put this in the center, this will be the center mark, but let's say you didn't hoop it properly and you want it to be at a different angle, this will automatically center it to that spot and change the angle for you. So it's really, really nice. So I was gonna pick it a little bit over here, actually. Yeah, let's stick it down here. Now I have it slightly tilted, so it's probably not gonna square it up properly. And I'm gonna say we're gonna line it up to the bottom right hand corner. So we're gonna hit okay. It's gonna move the embroidery in it. Cause it'll scan, oh. You'll see it's detected the snowman sticker. Just tell us to remove the sticker. We definitely don't want to stitch on top of that. And you can see what it did is it took where I positioned it and it angled it perfectly the way I want it to. Now, this isn't really how I would stitch it, but I just wanted to show you that it actually works for centering and for the, the angle. So it's a pretty neat way to, it's another way to do positioning on this. All right, another feature I'd like to show you is there is a border quilting feature here. So if I select this, and we're gonna pick one of these frames. So let's say that one looks pretty cool. In here, it can stitch all the way up to 118 by 118 inch quilt. So this is gonna do the border of a quilt. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually measure your quilt. Let's say you got 100 inches by 100 inches. And let's say we have maybe a five inch border that we wanna stitch on. And we're gonna use our largest hoop. So basically our eight by 14. Oh, sorry, I said five inches, but the largest we accept is 3.94. So we'll say, we'll say three and a half inch border. All right, and we're hit next. So it's already done the math and it's figured out exactly what size blocks that it wants us to stitch this out in to do the corner pieces and all the pieces in the middle. It's calculated, it's gonna take 64 different hoopings to quilt the border. So you'll save this to memory. When you actually go to stitch it, it'll actually tell you exactly where it wants you to hoop the quilt, what sections it'll use the positioning sticker here in order to line it up to the next one and it'll just have you go along and stitch all the border quilts. So it's a really neat way to, to do different borders. And if you have a larger quilt, you can always start small and do smaller borders and work your way out to do that. And then you can also use the camera to do some of the quilting blocks that are in here and you can completely quilt your whole project in the hoop on the multi-needle. The other feature that this has is it actually has IQ Designer built into it as well. So you can do some beginning digitizing using the IQ Designer. So from the home screen, you click on the IQ Designer page. Um, we're just gonna draw a couple shapes or just a shape here. I'm gonna use the flower, it's kind of a fun one. All right, we're gonna put it on here. We're gonna size it down a little bit so it fits on our particular hoop. We size it down a lot here. We're gonna hit okay. So there's two sections here. This is all the line properties and this is the fill properties. So I'm just gonna play mostly with the, the fill properties because I think they're more fun and they show up a lot better on here. So if you click the little paper icon next to it, this is gonna have you select what fill property you wanna do and what color. So this here is just your typical um, fill stitch. This is a stipple stitch. And this third one here there's all kinds of pre-built stitches that are in here. So I'm just gonna pick one of them. I'm gonna say, let's do red. Well, let me change it to purple. And then you have a couple different options in order to put the fill stitch in. You can use a paintbrush and go in here and try to paint in the area. Um, I'm not patient enough for that, so we're gonna undo that. There's this little bucket here that makes life a lot easier. And when you dump it in there, as long as it has a continuous line around it, it'll fill in the fill stitch. So we're gonna do this a couple different times, pick some different fill stitches. I'll do a green on this one, drop it in there. We'll do a blue circle, drop it over here. This is like you're coloring on your machine, it's kind of fun. Here. And we'll put some yellow in the middle. Let's just do a fill stitch in the middle. 
Okay, so now that I've filled this in with all the different properties, let's say you don't like the, the size of this, we'll, we'll get to that in the next screen. Uh, right now I have all the border stitches set for just a, a satin stitch, but if you want you can do the same thing in here and you can change each of the border ones and you just click on the border. Oops, I was drawing on that, so let me undo it. Oops. So you can see I have the little pencil icon on. What I want to do is the, the bucket and then I can just select on the outside and it'll change that. So we're going to hit next so that we can see it. So you can see that that one has the different chain stitch other than the, the satin stitch around the outside. So at this point you kind of see a little bit of a visual display of what's going on. Um, you can zoom in the middle and then you can paint around on here if you want to see different portions of it. If you want to select between, I'm going to go back to a regular zoom, if you want to select between the objects you can see whatever has the red box around it is what is currently highlighted, but you can see that's actually the outline stitch. And there's the border stitch and everything else. I'm going to go back to, okay, so now I'm at the green one, so this is the one with the leaf, and there's some settings down here that we can change. We can change the size of the design here. So we can size it down if we want to be able to see the leaves a little bit better. And you can see that it updates real time on this. So I'm going to go forward to that one here. We'll kind of show the next thing. So see how these like bricks are kind of horizontal? We're going to go in here and we're going to change the direction on them a little bit. And when it updates, you can see it changes that. We'll go to the little circles. Um, this here is saying whether or not it's going to stitch the border on the outside. A lot of times that's really handy for the machine to be able to do some travel stitches, but it's really your preference whether you want to see the border. We're going to have the satin stitch on top of it, so it's really not going to matter one way or another. This here is an option to be able to randomize. So let's say we've got, let me go back and change this to a little smaller. So we've got lots of little circles. Maybe this is too uniform looking for you. So you can go in here and you can do randomize. You can go all the way up to three, which does the most random. And you can see it makes it look more like pebbles and less um, uniform. Um, the last option we have with some of these is how thick you want the stitches. If you want them to look really nice and pronounced, you can do the thicker option, which will go through, go over like three to four times. If you only want it to go over the stitches like one to two times, you're going to do a thinner one. So if you want it to look more like quilting, you'll probably do the thinner one. If you want to see it and have it be more bold, you'll do the thicker. So basically once you go through all the settings, you're going to hit set. Um, let me go back, I'm going to hit cancel. So once you leave the IQ designer and go into the embroidery section, you can't edit this. So if you ever think you might want to edit these settings later, make sure you save it to your memory of your local machine. That way you can go back to it. Because once you exit here and go to the embroidery, you're going to lose those. So that's what it's warning you with here. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to embroidery. Um, I'm going to go in here. So I was going to try to turn off the camera, but um, but you can see our design is here. I'm going to drag it off the page so you can see that it's got everything set up. If I was to, it's being too smart for me. I know it's too big. All right, I think there's how I can turn off the background. Okay, so once we're on the embroidery screen, you can use this button to toggle the background so it's easier to see now. Um, so now we have that. You can do settings with it. You can go to embroidery. And you can see it's got all the, the color stops in there. So I wanted to show you how you actually assign colors to the designs when you go to stitch this out. When we stitched the last, when we stitched this design out, I didn't really care what color, we were just really testing the tension on everything. So I'm basically gonna go into a design. Uh, I think it's under celebrate. We'll pick this cute little leaf here. And we go to embroider. It's going to tell us to load these in this specific area, but let's say that's not, you already have these colors loaded somewhere else and you just want to pick from what's there. This is definitely the easiest to load it this way, but I definitely wouldn't recommend unthreading something just to move it into this position. So I kind of want to show you what to do from there. So in here, let's say it's looking for a yellow, but the yellow is not in our one spot. If we look at it, it's kind of over there in our six, seven spot. So we're going to go down here to the color swap. And we're going to swap one and seven, oops, one and seven and hit the swap. Now this one's kind of auto assigned it, kind of weird here, but we'll kind of go with that. Um, number two is going to be kind of a lighter orange. I don't really have that, so we're just going to kind of mix it up a little bit. We'll have this do the, the one. So we're going to swap two and one. 
And then this goes a little bit darker. So we'll say we're gonna do the red next, which is two. So we're gonna swap and go back. So we're gonna swap two and three. Okay, so we're gonna go to the seven, we're gonna three, two. And we'll change this one to the one. So we're gonna swap four with one. And then we'll finish with, I don't know, maybe the black. Six, seven, eight. Eight with a five. And again, don't pay attention to what this has over here. Take a look at the color stops that it's gonna do here. So it's gonna stitch out what's on position seven, then three, then two, then one, then five. Um, if you wanted, I don't really have the right colors loaded on here to make this look pretty, but that's just an example of how you switch it. If you wanted to override it just for one specific case, so maybe this one, I wanna do a really weird color leaf on it. So let's say I wanted to do a blue instead. What I could is I can say that on this first color stop that I'm gonna pick position five on it and stitch it out. Now, when you stitch this out, once it's done completed stitching, it's gonna go back to the original number that it had on there. So um, definitely keep an eye on that. Um, another way I wanna show you how to do this, again, if you don't do it auto color assign that it wants you to do here, if you wanna manually override it every time, which sometimes is really nice because I don't like to really stitch out the colors it tells me to do it anyways. I like to pick my own. I'm gonna go back to the home screen. Uh, if you go to the settings, and it's on page seven, I believe, you can change this to manual color sequence. Now, when you do manual color sequence, it isn't gonna remember what colors you have in there at all. So you hit okay. I'm gonna go in, let's do a frame. So once you select this frame and you go to embroidery, Again, it's put these two in color stop one and two, uh, but if you don't want that, let's say I wanna do a green. So I'm gonna do three and five. So I'm gonna go in, you'll see it doesn't have the color swap anymore. It just has it where you pick it. So I wanna do three and five, oops. Three, and then go down here to five. And I wanna pick that. So when it stitches out, it's gonna first do this top portion, the green color, and then number two with the blue color. So if you want it to go back to color sequencing, and again, you can tell that it's in manual mode because of this icon right here. Um, but when you wanna go back to the color matching like it did before, we have to go back to the settings. So we're gonna clear out this design, go back to the settings. All right, and that's on page seven. We're gonna turn this back off. And then we're gonna go back to page three. And then this is where you can go in and you can actually set the colors you want. So another common thing is you have a couple of colors like black and white typically that you're gonna use over and over and over again. So what you could do is you could load black. Let me just pick a color here. So we could load black on Neil 10, okay? So we have that in there. If we want it to always be black on that one, we can set this anchor icon and you can see the little icon shows up. And what that means is that it'll always leave black in that position. So um, it'll always remember it in that. The caveat to that is if you load a 10 color design that doesn't have any black in it, it won't assign anything into that spot. So you'll end up having to do a thread change. Um, so that's nice to do. The other thing here is you have it where you can turn off the auto threader for a particular needle. So in the case of you're using a metallic thread or something that's super thick that you know isn't gonna work with a needle threader, you can actually turn it off when you load that thread to make sure that it won't go through there and cause problems. I'm gonna turn that off for now. Um, so I wanna show you that we have the threading. Um, the other one is we've been doing everything that's 10 colors or less. If you load a design that has more than that, all right, this lighthouse should have it. All right, so now that we have the right one, so you can see it's gonna stitch out all these colors here. And when you see the red line, this is where it's gonna prompt you to actually do some color changes. And when you get to this point, it's only gonna tell you to change the colors in these stops right here and continue on. So it prompts you through this. It's really nice how it does that. I also wanna show you how to use the scan frame in conjunction to IQ Designer. But first we need to take off the A-frame. So there's three screws on the back. I always want you to remember the largest screw goes all the way on the left-hand side. We're not gonna mess with them, that one at this point. That's only adjusted when we change the, the hoop size. So I'm gonna go ahead and take both little screws all the way out. And definitely you can pay attention to where they came on and how the posts load onto this when you put it back. That'll definitely be handy.
Let's drop that. Or instead I'll drop it. Okay, so this is your scanning frame that you have. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I just have a little coloring page here, and we're gonna use the magnets that come with it. Um, it gives you six magnets. I don't know that you really need to use all six. It's just personal preference. Just make sure it doesn't get in the way. Um, it shows you on the corner where you want it to be lined up. Um, if you have a design that fits exactly the size, you said this is for your two and three eighths by one and a half inch hoop, the four by four and so forth. But I'm gonna put the whole thing in and we'll crop it when we get in later. You use the magnets to hold it down. Okay, and you'll see we have the posts that are in the back are gonna fit in these rectangular holes and then we're gonna put these in the circular holes. So we're gonna get those back here. And you get better at this with time. Okay, so once you have that properly tightened down, we're gonna go back into IQ Designer. And that's gonna move. So up here at the top, um, you can do an image scan or we're going to do a, a we're going to choose line design today and what that's basically going to do is going to take the line and it's going to help us be a, a template for us or if this was a full color picture you can use illustration design if you want to do some basic digitizing with it uh, we're just going to choose it as a line and then we're going to choose the option to scan so it's telling us it's going to scan And what it notices, we didn't attach the needle plate cover. Now, if you look actually on the frame itself, we have this little needle plate cover and it actually lines it up perfectly for us to drop this in. So I'm gonna put that in, we're gonna hit okay and just hit scan again. The other thing that's really important when you do this, you wanna make sure you don't put the picture over the black and white bars. It uses that to calibrate the frame, to make sure it's there properly. Okay, now it's scanned it on properly. Um, you can change the grayscale detection level up and down. Um, if you're seeing anything kind of weird, uh, you can also change this to crop this down, which we'll probably do just so we don't have to erase quite so much. We'll do that. You can change the, the fill stitch at this point. I'm just gonna leave it with the satin, or not the fill stitch, the border stitch with it. I'm gonna leave it as a satin not too bad we only have a couple of different lines here so I'm gonna go ahead and go in here I'm gonna use the eraser tool I change it to a square bump up the size of it then we go in here and I'm gonna erase these other lines that we have that's not there let's see if we can zoom in I have a couple little things here I might actually erase too too much so let's go bring it down in size kind of erase those little lines here okay now that everything looks all right I'm gonna go ahead and go next and so this is showing us kind of the fill stitch that we have here let me go back I mean, Remember I says if you want to ever edit this in the future, you need to make sure you save it in IQ Designer before you go over to the embroidery side. Um, so you go ahead and do the memory, we're gonna save it to the machine, we hit set, and then we're gonna send it over to the embroidery. And so then from here, then you can go through and do some fun stuff here. This is doing the stipple on the outside. Um, but there's some other things you can play with it with that. But that's the way to get images from the scan frame into your machine using IQ Designer. One of the fantastic things that a multi-needle does is it does a fabulous job of stitching on hats. This is something that's nearly impossible to do on a flatbed machine. Works great on this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we have a separate cap frame 
and a cap hooping jig over here. So make sure it's mounted on a sturdy surface. We'll take this off here and I'll show you what we got going on here. So you see there's a lock and an unlock. So typically it's locked where this, when you're embroidering onto it, but when you wanna go to lo load it, you wanna unlock this so this come out, comes out freely. We're gonna slide this onto the jig and you can see it lines up properly. There's two clamps at the top and one at the bottom, so make sure it gets attached in all three. You're gonna take your hat, you wanna make sure you bend the sweatband out of the way. You're gonna load it like this. There's a center mark, so you keep it in the center. As you come around the side, you can kinda of get the sweatband to kinda of hook in over here. Get the sweatband over there. Double check that you stay in the center. Uh, you make sure these like little teeth are right on the very edge of the hat. And we're going to have this pulled up. I forgot an important step, so let me set this to the side real quick. Before we put that on here, you're going to take your stabilizer. It's going to go in between these two plates. It slides in here. And there's little teeth right here that kind of help hold the stabilizer on, which is actually really neat. So once we have this set up, we need to make sure we switch this over to lock. There's two little channels on either side. This slides down. I'm kind of clicking on on both sides till it can't go any further. So just like that, it's nice and tight. And then you got your two clamps at the top. You can just pull that off here. Once you have that. You can kind of fold this out of the way and it comes with like little clamps just to kind of keep some of the stuff so it doesn't get caught later on when you're stitching. We'll just do that. So that's loaded here then we'll go over to put the frame on in front. So I've already taken off the A-frame or the scanning frame and we're using the same little screws for it. And this goes around here. Make sure you don't hit the needle bars. Slides over really nice. So the little holes go over the pins and then you'll screw the screws in where the little slots are. One thing I forgot to grab is we definitely want to make sure we put that needle plate on there like we did for the scanning frame. I'll grab that real quick, make sure we put that on there. Okay, then we're gonna go load the cap on there. So again, you're not gonna be able to load it this way, it's gonna hit the needle bars. So we're gonna kind of slide it on sideways, rotate it up. You should be able to kind of feel for it. right there and it clamps on, just like that. So then on the machine, we're gonna go back here. There's some built-in designs that work perfectly for the hat. So I'm gonna pick this lion, for example. I'm gonna go ahead and hit set. And it automatically detected that we had the cap frame on. If you see, it turns the design upside down. So we're gonna do this and to do a trace. This will actually show you how when it's stitching it actually rotates the cap and goes through it. So you can see how much easier that is to stitch out a cap. So there's also a really nice integration with an app that you have on your phone. It's called IQ Monitoring. But first before I show the app I want to show you how to set up your machine to be on a wireless network in order to be able to communicate with your phone. So I'm going to go into the settings page and we're going to go forward to page 9 and you wanna make sure you wanna enable the wireless LAN. So you turn that on, and then you're gonna go through the setup wizard and actually select your Wi-Fi network that you have. Um, you also alternately can set up your machine name so that you can find it, especially if you have more than one machine. At that point, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is on your phone, you wanna connect it to the same wireless network, and then you'll already have the IQ Designer app downloaded. And then you can open that. Um, if you have it already connected to your machine in the settings screen, you can find in here the Venture. 
And then as it's stitching, you can see it's already shown what we have out here. At the bottom, you can actually see how much time has elapsed. You can see um, how many stitches it's there. You can see that it's on the first color of two. You can even go to the thread color list and see approximate times on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the sewing again. And you'll actually watch that the green crosshairs on the screen will actually follow along real time along with your design, which is really neat. So if you need to go help the kids with homework or go get some laundry started, you can do it while this is still stitching and you have it on your hand. This will detect, um, the machine will obviously detect any thread breaks or issues with it. But when that happens, it'll actually notify you on your, on your phone um, that you need to go pay some attention to your machine. You can also see a nice progress bar on the screen. It's really, really handy. Um, you definitely want to keep it running. You don't necessarily have to have it open, but it'll ping you with notifications. So make sure you have notifications turned on for the IQ monitoring app. We're going to speed through the stitch out a little bit um, just to kind of go through it, but it's a good thing to show you too. If at any time you have a thread break or your bobbin runs out or anything like that, um, you may need to go forward or back steps. Down here at the bottom, there's a needle plus minus button and you can use it to go um, forward and back steps. So I'm going to use it to kind of trick things out a little bit so that way we're not waiting all day for this. So you can see the app has automatically detected that we're, we jumped ahead to. So this popped up finished. And then it actually pops up with a message on here, a notification that it's finished embroidering as well on the on the phone. So it's definitely a handy tool. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick while this was stitching out, I wanted to, to mention something to you. So if we go back to edit screen, sorry, back to the embroider, when you're doing the, the layout, let's say this is an applique design. If you ever want to stop it, have it to where it stops stitching and not immediately goes to the next color and you want it to stop so that you can do an applique, for example, you can go down, select the number, and put the hand on it that says to hold. So it's basically going to stop stitching prior to stitching that color so that you can do whatever applique you need, and then you'll just hit lock and start again. So I want to show you some different ways on how to get images or designs into your machine in order to stitch out. So everything we've been doing up to this point has either been built-in designs or we're using IQ Designer to create the designs. But as you can see here, we have some other options to do down here along the bottom. So we can either load any of the designs we've saved to on the machine. So as you build designs, if, it's, if you've done anything special with it with sizing or rotation, it's always a good idea to save to your machine. Um, there's also two, US, two USB slots on the side. There's also a USB slot here to connect to a computer. And then there's also wireless capability. So I'm gonna plug just the top USB in. Let me select this. And you can pick from whatever happens to be on that drive inset and everything else is the same as it would be with a built-in design. So I'm gonna go back to home. Um, the next thing I wanna show you is that you could you can use a USB, um, but they tend to be kind of a pain in the butt. You could lose them, you forget what's on them, um, but it's really nice that you have the capability to just transfer through Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out and I wanna show you how to do that. So again, we've gone through the settings on this machine already and we have already set it up to the same wireless network. And then we're gonna go through the machine. Recording in progress. We're gonna go onto the computer here and I have it set up on the same wireless network. I'll just double check that real quick. Oh, it was close. All right, so now that we're on the same network. So I'm gonna show you two tools on the computer that can work with this. So one is Palette, um, and that's an additional purchase, but there is a free tool out there with BabyLock. So I wanna show you how to use that one first. Um, so if you go to babylock.com here, and then you search for Design Database Transfer Tool, 
And when you get your search results, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the design database transfer link. So we're going to click on that. And then when you scroll down a little bit, this is really, really hard to see. But if you can see this download word has a hyperlink text, from there you're going to download the program and install it. So once that's downloaded, it's this little paper icon that's got an arrow on it. And we're going to click to open it. And it defaults to a directory that has a couple of different little images in it. So first, we have our venture set up on the network. I'm going to go set it up here. So the button all the way on the top right. We're going to click on that. Oh, I do have the venture in here already. If the venture wasn't on here, I would need to go add and search for it. So we're going to click out of this. At the bottom, I want to make sure I have the venture selected. So we're sending stuff to it. So I'm going to choose to send uh, like this flower and that one as well. So what I'm doing is I'm just selecting the design. I'm clicking the down arrow to bring it down into our queue that we're going to send over. Now at this point, it hasn't sent it across. We still have to click the button here to transfer it over to the embroidery machine. So it's finished outputting, and then when we come over here to the machine, we click on the Wi-Fi. You'll notice we have the two flower designs that are out there now, and you can continue. Now if this is open and you realized, oh, I thought I had the soccer ball in there, um, we can clear this queue here. Because I don't need to send those over again. We take the soccer ball, we add it down, we transfer it over. And you can see it updates real time. So it's really pretty handy to be able to do that. There, there it is. All right, so that's through the free database design transfer tool. Um, if you've used Palette and you have designed your own designs, it's really nice to send those over through that tool as well. So I'll open up Palette for you. Again, um, we're going to have to set this up, so I'm going to open a design. I'm going to need to go to my settings. So in the top right, then you go to options, and then go to options again. Network machine settings. I do have the venture in here, so I'm going to cancel out of that. Once I have my design loaded, I thought I opened one. Okay, once I have my design loaded, the top right button sends I want to send it to the embroidery machine. Send to network machine. I'm going to pick the venture. Gave me an error on here, so let's see if let's try a different one. So let me grab this guy, he's a little bit smaller. It probably wasn't th that design was set up for a different hoop size, so it probably had an issue with it. So there, Stitch popped up over here. So that's how easy it is to take designs from your machine and transfer them over to your embroidery machine. I gave you a sampling of a lot of the different features in the Venture. There's more to it than just that. So please feel free to dig around, try some different things. It really is fairly proof about how it does things. It's not gonna let you do something you're not allowed to do. If you have any questions or any need any help with this at all, please give us a call. Um, we're here with you every stitch of the way. Happy stitching.